Make sure to refresh the screen after you turn on the class tracking. You can do that with a little icon up top so that the class tracking will be populated in your bank feed information. So then if I scroll down, I'm gonna say, all right, let's pick up one of these items. Let's pick up, for example, this item here. And we're gonna say that I'm gonna send, make a customer. Now I could make the customer just test customer and then still break out between the two classes and categories using the memo. Or you might wanna make a different customer, even though it's basically the same customer, so that you can sort by customer, have each customer assigned to like a particular uh, income account and class. So I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna make two different customers, even though it's the same customer. So I'm gonna say customer, I've already got this one set up. So I'm gonna set that one up. And then this one is gonna go into the income category. Let's say this one goes into income category location number one. So this is assigning it by location by subcategory. Note now we have this class field. So I can then go into the class field and I already set up my classes. If you don't have them set up, you could just add a class on the fly as you go. I'm just gonna call it location number one. This will be the column on the income statement that will break out the different locations of the classes. Now, if you, if you needed to split the items, you could split down here and that will give you the capacity to, to assign one deposit to multiple accounts and multiple classes. So I'm gonna close this back out and then say, all right, let's make a rule for it. I'm gonna say it's gonna be a rule. I'm just gonna call it customer, customer. Well, let's keep it that, let's do the whole thing. Customer, that rule, it's a money in rule. I'm gonna say all conditions are met. And then I could do this a couple different ways. Like I could say, I want the bank text and then say that it contains and then make sure that it contains the whole thing, including that number. But sometimes that number might be like a random number, like in the middle of a whole jung jargon of stuff. So sometimes, and, and, and sometimes it doesn't pick it up if it's like, like they're out of order, this number some, somewhere in the middle of a long jargon of numbers and text and whatnot. So you could say, I want bank text or maybe just the description, the description picking up just this information and then add another one, which could be the bank text the second one has to be bank text the first one you could just say the description with the major name and then say it contains that number component 240 the distinguishing factor between the two locations and then we can test it to see if it picks it up so four items are picked up so that looks good then down below it's a deposit type of form that's correct category uh is looks good and the test and then we've got a class tracking on location number one so that looks good and then i'm not going to add it yet i'm going to turn it off so i can check it first so i'm going to save it and then i can scroll up and say okay let's go ahead and sort it by the recognized items and so there's the new rule that we put in place these three so from here i'm holding down shift down to here i'm going to add those so let's accept and add those and then I'm gonna go into my balance sheet. On the balance sheet, of course, we're gonna have a deposit in the checking account. So that's not really where our focus is. On the income statement, that's our focus. Let's go there. I'm gonna run it to refresh it. We now have the test account, and then we broke out the location with a sub account. Then that's one way we can break out the location. Now let's see it also broken out by the new thing we added, which is the classes. I'm gonna right click on the tab up top to do that and duplicate it and then go down to the reports on the left hand side. I'm gonna type in up top the profit and loss and I wanna look at the PL by class, profit and loss by class. Picking that one up, closing the hamburger. Notice that all it really did is a normal profit and loss but it changed this drop down, which now has a classes field at the bottom. So if you wanted to make your normal profit and loss into a class breakout back and forth, you can choose your classes here. But I wanna show both tabs so we can go back and forth. Let's change the range. We're gonna go from 010122 tab, 123122 tab, run it. So now we've got our two classes. There's this item broken out by class, which is nice. Notice that all of the other stuff that's not assigned to class, everything else is into not specified. You could go into each of these transactions and now assign them a class, 
because every form that's related to the income statement should now have the option of assigning a class. So you could do that. I'm going to close this back out, close this back out. Also note when using class tracking, you might say, look, if, if I have my main location over here and then everything that's in the other location, maybe that's what I assign a class to or department or whatever you're doing. And then everything else is not specified goes into the main department. That might be a little bit faster, but normally I would think that you would want to assign a class to every transaction on the income statement so that every transaction will be assigned one or the other class. And if anything then is not specified as a class, you can go into that item and assign it to a class. So that gives you like an internal control, a double check. A lot of times people are kind of scared to assign classes because then you might miss a transaction and, and whatnot. But remember, like it's not really messing anything up to assign the class if, if you're not using them because you still have the standard income statement. It just gives you that other dimension and you can always then go into these non-specified areas and assign them a class and that shouldn't mess up your income statement really in general because you're not assigning it to a different account. You're just putting it into another line item or column of class when making a profit and loss by class. All right, let's do the other one. I'm going to go to the tab and go to the second customer. And so this one, again, I could make it the same name for the customer, but I'm going to make a different customer name so I can search each of those customers information with their with the specific location. I'm going to put the class is now location two. If you don't have location two, you can add a class and type in a location two. And then we'll set the rule down below. Let's put in a rule and I'm going to say it's test two money in again. I could say description or bank text. I'm going to say description with the test customer, add another one. This one has to be the bank text, which is more descriptive, which has the number one, five, three in it. And then test the rule six have been applied. That looks right. So here's the information down below. There's our class location. Looks good. Mui B to the end. So let's save it. B to the end. Let's add it now. So the rules I'm holding down shift. Let's just add those rules and accept. So now if I go back on over, 